Welcome back to the history of it. I'm glad you could join us today. Today, we're going to talk about one of the most iconic cars from television and movie history. There's a link in the description below to the model build on the channel. But for now, stick tight and let's take a look at the history of the 1966 Batmobile. Now I ask, is there a more iconic television vehicle than the Batmobile? No. In fact, it's probably the most well-known television vehicle on the planet, and very likely the first world-famous television vehicle. Now many of us know that George Barris made this car for the 1966 Batman television series. But do you know exactly how this car became the car that it is to us today? Looking through many sites and videos, I found that the first reference of a physical Batmobile came in 1943 for the series titled The Batman. It was a 1939 Cadillac Series 75 convertible. There were no customizations. It just happened to be the car they had available to use for the series. Next, in the 1948 Batman and Robin series, the Batmobile was a 1949 Mercury convertible, just a stock ticket right off the line, nothing done to it. The series had introduced the Batcave set, as well as a set for Wayne Manor, but unfortunately had no budget left to customize a Batmobile. About three years before the 1966 television series premiered, around 1962, a man by the name of Forrest Robinson built a Batmobile, per se, from a 1956 Oldsmobile Rocket 88. This Batmobile did have some custom work to, done to it, and it did include something like a shark's fin on the back. This car was used by the All-Star Dairy Products Company to promote their Batman and Robin ice cream treats. In August of 1965, William Dozier, the creator of the soon to premiere television series and owner of Greenway Productions, approached Dean Jeffries to build the Batmobile for the show. Now, as some of you may know the name Dean Jeffries, he was a man who was responsible for another famous television vehicle, the Monkey Mobile. Jeffries had an idea immediately, and he wanted to use a 1959 Cadillac for his vision of the Batmobile. But sadly, we can't see what he had in mind, as in the end he had to turn the job down due to the tight deadline given to complete the project. Dozier then approached George Barris, who we now call the King of Customizers, to build him a Batmobile on the 20th of August, 1965. Now, Barris had a car in mind immediately. It was a car that he already saw within the lines of a bat. The car in George's mind had been sitting outside behind his shop for several years and indeed was already a one-off and was a Hollywood car. The Batmobile to be was originally the head cheese of Lincoln Mercury's post-war chief stylist William M. Schmidt, but not as the Batmobile you know. At this point in history, the car we're talking about is called the 1955 Lincoln Futura. The odd design of this car was inspired by a whale shark that Schmidt had seen while scuba diving. And while it was a product of Lincoln and the Ford Motor Company, the Caro Ziara Ghia automaking firm of Turn Italy handcrafted the Futura for Lincoln. Its sole purpose was to be a concept car that debuted at the 1955 Chicago Auto Show. Its twin domed plexiglass pods for the passengers and its unique design made it futuristic and quite distinct. Originally, the car had a sparkling pearl frost blue white finish and that exceptional pearl was created by adding thousands of tiny fish scales to the paint. Now at the time it cost around $250,000, an enormous sum for the times, and after the auto show circuit it was only used as a test bed for Lincoln's newest automotive innovations, such as push button transmissions. In 1959, the Futura made its film debut in the MGM movie It Started With A Kiss, starring Debbie Reynolds and Glenn Ford. For the film, the Futura was painted red and treated to a red interior. The director felt that the white 
did not film well. In the film, the car was won in a raffle by Reynolds' character. After the movie and all the testing, the car just sat and eventually was later sold to customizer George Barris, who already had a relationship with Ford Lincoln due to his affiliation with the Ford Custom Car Caravan Program. Even with the car's original cost being so high, the 1955 Lincoln Futura was sold to Barris for $1 by the Ford Motor Company. The car had never been titled and therefore was uninsurable. It sat parked outside behind Barris's North Hollywood shop for several years. Now, obviously, George didn't build the car on his own. He had a team of approximately five or six people working on the car with him. A production artist named Eddie Grave helped George design and sketch the Batmobile. And one of the crew members, Richard Corks, or they called him Corky, customized a five gallon paint can into the rear turbine exhaust. Yeah, it was a paint can. The studio was responsible for adding all of the gadgets, the bat things, like the bat phone or the bat scope, and the bat light flashers. When the pilot started shooting in October of 1965, the Batmobile wasn't quite finished. It had only a black primer on it and did not stand out well enough on film. It didn't film well. George Barris had spoken to the studios and was quoted as saying, they wanted to get more of a gloss on it. We then airbrushed white highlights around the outside edges, but that didn't come out as strong either. And that's when we went into the three quarter inch red fluorescent glow edges to accentuate the bat face and the fins. It made it much more dramatic. A few days later, on October 11th, 1965, the Batmobile was completed. It was described as having a nitrocellulose velvet glow bat fuzz black with a fluorescent charie stripe. That's the fancy way of saying it was gloss black with a red stripe. The Batmobile was delivered to the studios where it made its television debut on the 12th of January, 1966. And at this time, the car was insured for $125,000. Now, after all the testing and the years spent with Lincoln and all the sitting outside, the now decade old engine and transmission had seen better days. And shortly after filming started, they were both replaced with those of a 1966 Ford Galaxy. In March of 1966, George Barris applied for a patent on the Batmobile, and on October 18th of 66, the U.S. Patent Office granted him a patent, number 205-998, the Bat Patent, if you will. After the show ended, the Batmobile returned to live at Barris's North Hollywood shop, unless it was needed for an event or a photo shoot and there were copies made in the 60s for that purpose. In the 1970s, George Barris decided to cover the cars in flocking, or what he called bat fuzz. A nylon flocking was better resistant to dirt, stains, and more durable than the paint. The Batmobile stayed all fuzzed up until the mid-1980s. In 1979, it appeared in the TV show Legends of the Superheroes, and in the 1980s and beyond, the 1966 Batmobile has made appearances in many shows and movies, including animated shows like The Simpsons. George Barris finally decided to sell the car in 2013, and it was sold at the Barrett Jackson Scottsdale auction on the 19th of January, 2013, with a reserve price of $2.5 million. A final bid? $4.2 million, a record for a television or movie car at the time. In June of 2015, again, the Batmobile was put up for sale, and this time with a $5 million price tag. In August of 2016, the Batmobile sold for an undisclosed amount. Now, I mentioned three copies that have been made, and they were made from fiberglass molds molded from the original 1966 Batmobile. All three copies were used for promotional events in the 1960s, and all were built 
on Ford Galaxy chassis that had been lengthened 11 inches. The first copy had a distinction from the others as it was the only copy to have a unique beacon cage design and a unique shaped bat on the door that were signif significantly different than the other copies. Copy number two had its own distinctions as well, since it was the only copy at the time that had working headlights and was originally equipped with a manual transmission versus an automatic. The third copy, now this was the one I liked, it was a cool one, it was built for drag racing. It was utilized in 1967 for an exhibition tour at local drag strips throughout the United States. If you wanted to rent the car for a driving exhibition, it would set you back about $1,250 to $1,500 a day. And that was the only copy that also shot flames from the turbine exhaust. Back on the track, when driven by Wild Bill Shrewsbury, this car could run the quarter mile in 12 seconds, approaching speeds of 117 miles an hour. Since its debut, the 1966 Batmobile has always been a part of our pop culture and will be for the foreseeable future. And that's the history of it.